With a, uh, a modern instrument, we have a very uh, a modern optical bench which develops a full spectrum. Uh, the full infrared spectrum is uh, essentially gathered in at one time. Uh, that's why you can run a sample and at one instant the full infrared spectrum is, is collected. That is the biggest advantage of this Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy is that you have the full spectral analysis. Production plant personnel today don't want to be worried about the scientific part of the instrument. They just want to walk up to an instrument, uh, run a sample, press a button, and get a result. And that's where we focus on today is these dedicated solutions. The uh, um, dedicated solutions we have for the, uh, the dairy industry are primarily de designed around for liquid and semi-liquid products. Um, in, in this way, we have a, uh, an instrument that will give the best accuracy with the most information to uh, measure uh, complex dairy products. Today, in, in the dairy industry, we, are not, we have gone beyond just looking for fat and total solids measurements. We want much more complex uh, um, uh, measurement capabilities. For example, a, a yogurt manufacturer where they're adding different sugars such as sucrose or fructose or uh, uh, lactose, we need to be able to tell the difference between these different sugars that are, are, are to be analyzed. The dedicated solutions are designed around to give all of these optimal accuracy for these liquid, uh, liquid products to be able to get all of this information. When we say liquid dairy products or, or semi-liquid dairy products, we are limited to, uh, in, in the flow design, a system where we need to pump a sample. So obviously at some point you will get to a sample where you can no longer pump it uh, into a system. Then you would have to look at um, other technologies. You'll see some instrument is measuring in transmittance and some in reflectance. And the main difference is in transmission, we take the NIR light, send it into the sample, and collect it on the other side. Reflectance is just the opposite. We put the NIR light on the sample and collect what is reflected. Traditionally, you'll see transmittance used in, in the part of the NIR spectrum where you have the absolute highest energy in the light source. And that is typically below 1100 nanometers. This is why if you want to have a good, representative, accurate and reliable result for heterogeneous your samples, you're using transmissions and you're using the scanning range from maybe 800 to 1100 nanometer because you can go through a lot of sample and get a representative sample or spectrum and get a, a very reliable result. So reflectance part of the spectrum, we normally use the part from 1100 up to the range for mid-infrared, that is 2500 nanometers. Reflectance we often use for product types that's very solid, like for instance here, a, a infant formula. Uh, it reflects very well the light, and this one is reasonable homogeneous. It needs to be homogeneous, first of all, the energy level is lower in this part of the spectrum, so we don't penetrate that deep. Maybe half a millimeter, or maybe only a part of a millimeter. And this is very, very tricky because that makes it a little bit tricky to make the sample pre pre presentation. You have to make sure make sure that even though you have a, a smooth surface here, then of course the air moisture will be absorbed and the moisture concentration on the surface will change. There is one advantage with this type of crop where you're measuring in reflectance from below because the sample you're actually measuring is not exposed to air and the moisture vapor from the air, so there's no absorption of moisture that can destroy our results. So even though you leave it here for two or three minutes, it will not change. The spectra will not change, the prediction will not change.
One thing is to collect, take the right solution for transmittance and reflectance that can sometimes be a little bit hard to make uh, 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 the deci decision to go for. But there is one thing more. You need to have a calibration. An NIR instrument without a calibration is worth nothing. The value you can take out of your solution is only available when you have a robust calibration. And I have to say up front, NIR calibration development is not easy. The spectra is very, very complex, so you need a lot of experience and you need a lot of data before you have a reliable uh, calibration. I can give you one example. We have one of our solutions, a food scan, uh, where we have a calibration for cheese. It in includes data from more than 100,000 samples. If you're starting from scratch and develop a calibration, you get the instrument, you don't get any value out before you are finished with your calibration work. And that will cost you a lot of analytical work. And it will cost you a long time before you get the value out of your instrument. With the calibration supplied uh, on the instrument, we, we have multi-components, meaning we can have fat, protein, lactose, total solids, and all of that can be just uh, analyzed in 30 seconds. So uh, we do have a true multi-component um, dairy products analyzer, and uh, the main thing there is as well is it's extremely rapid. If we take the FT NIR, that is a, again a different technology inside optical uh, design. FT NIR, the main problem with FT uh, NIR is the scanning rates. An FT NIR instrument is not reliable or it's not able to go really low in the, uh, in the NIR spectrum. That means you cannot measure anything where they have the real high energy in the light source like we can do in transmittance. So that means if you have heterogeneous products, you will not be able to do it very well on the FTNR, except you will have a lot of sample preparation to do before you can do the analysis. Then you will all see some DDA solutions. A DDA solution is uh, it's a very fast scanning method, a uh, fast method, so you can get very fast results. On the other hand, the range and the ability to get a lot of uh, parameters out is limited. But there is a lot of uh, opportunities, but you need to know exactly what you're doing because you need to take a DDA for transmittance or DDA, DDA for reflectance. You need to know which one you're going to uh, take. And then, of course, there's a lot of opportunities, but be, uh, be aware that uh, if you take the wrong decision from day one, you can end up with a hell lot of work. <laughs> <laughs>